All dressed up and no place to go. That was 2020. <laughs> okay, actually, 2020 wasn't a whole lot of dressed up, but it was a crap ton of no place to go. And let's also be honest, some of all y'all spent a good deal of 2020 in your pajama bottoms and sweatpants. You know who you are. But this is 2021. It's a new year. There's all kinds of possibilities, and I wanted to make two important announcements, and I got all dressed up to do it. Announcement number one. I would like to reform and reconstitute all the major ministries of our church that ground to a halt as a result of the pandemic and the shutdowns. I'm talking worship team, uh, sound and technology, Sunday morning hosting, coffee, large events, children's ministries, nursery, G-Town, you get the idea. I want these teams to have their first meeting, even if it's by Zoom, by the second week of February. And I want you to start thinking about the year. What do you need? What would you like to see happen? What would make your heart sing when it comes to the life of our congregation and the role of that ministry in our shared life together? The other thing about the reconstitution or the reformation of these major ministries is that I want to I want to implement a year commitment. So moving forward as a church, it's going to be the case that wherever you're involved, the understanding is you're there for a year. Maybe that year is January to December. Maybe that year is summer to summer. It doesn't matter whether it's the calendar year or the school year. I simply want all of us to commit a year at a time. And at the end of the year, your ministry leader will talk with you and ask you, hey, how'd it go? What went well? What didn't go well? Do you want to commit to another year or do you want to step out for a season? And at that point, everyone's got the option to step out, try something new, or ante up again for another year. Okay? So ministries and programs and, and things that are part of our church life I want you to be getting together in the next 45 days and have your first meeting. The second thing I want to announce is some details about this renewal initiative. So you've been reading about it and you've probably heard me talk about it. And a number of you are aware of the fact that <clears throat> generations applied to the Lilly Foundation three years in a row to help fund this initiative. Well, this year, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it on our own, okay? The first thing that is going to mark this renewal initiative is that it's going to provide a much-needed sabbatical for the Vanderpools. So around July, the Vanderpools will step away from generations for roughly three months. Another pastor will come in and will love you and be part of what goes on here during those three months. At the end of the three months, the Vanderpools will come back and together we will start and step out on a journey together where we're answering this question. What are the rituals, traditions, habits, milestone events, celebrations that we want to mark our community life together, our church family life together? We're gonna have some experiences together as a church family. We're gonna have a Jews for Jesus event. We're gonna have somebody from the Orthodox tradition come in and talk to us about the, the table fellowship and what that looks like to have table, ship, table fellowship be part of your church life together. For those of you that grew up Baptist, I'm talking potlucks. Uh, but we're gonna go on this journey together and we're gonna be working on things. There's gonna be projects, there's gonna be teams and it's going to be a church family effort, and it's going to take us into 2022. But at the end of this process, I think we'll all be pleased with some things that are kind of part of our calendar, part of our life, part of our worship experiences that root us. Okay? Here's why this is important. A couple of years ago, 
my wife and I decided to make a few tweaks to Christmas. We changed the menu, we changed what happened, and we changed where we did things on Christmas morning. We made those changes because we thought it would make it easier for Jenny and me, and easier for the family. After all, our kids were older. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> you would have thought that we had told the kids that one of us was having an affair or that we were getting divorced because the reaction, particularly the reaction among the older adult children was, what? This is not how we do Christmas. We cannot do this. We cannot open gifts in the family room. You are ruining Christmas, mom and dad. Now, there's some bad things to that, right? When you hold on to something that's not working anymore, that's dead religion, you're not holding on to something that's worth holding on to. But on the other hand, something powerful happens in these traditions. And so what's true of my family and yours is also true of our church family. Traditions matter. Traditions matter. Now, I want to say something to all of you as individuals and as households. Here's the deal. You're not here by accident. I'm sorry. Don't believe it. Don't buy it. It's not a coincidence. Uh, you're not here by accident. You're here for a reason. In fact, I believe God has brought you here for this moment to be part of this journey with us as we move forward as Generations Community Church. Your experiences, your perspective, your gifts and talents, you're here for a reason. And so, thank you. Thank you for being part of this church family. You know what? We've already been on this journey, even though I haven't articulated this as such from a platform like this. How do I know that? When you come into our facility, you see things hanging on the walls, don't you? That makes us different than all the other Protestant churches in town, right? Like if you go to all the other band jeans wearing churches in this area, their walls are blank. They might have some soundproofing on them, but that's it. We put things on the walls with intentionality outside the children's areas, in our sanctuary, in our lobby. Meg Hull recently, in the last year or so, put together a series of four glass, uh, uh, glass made uh, objects that represent the four parts of the big story uh, creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. And this represents the city of God, the resurrected life. These will hang in the hallways out there. On a Sunday morning, back at Lone Oak, remember the Sunday when during worship, there were these four different panels and people worked on them together and then together the four panels made something? See, we've already been on this journey. And so now we're just gonna be articulating some things and talking about some things and nailing some things down and making some plans as we move forward together. I'm excited about 2021, 2022, because I know all y'all and you're a creative bunch. And together, we're gonna come up with some amazing things and God is gonna do some amazing things in us and through us. Thank you for being flexible. Thank you for embodying the values that hang on our walls. It's been a great thing in the midst of this pandemic. In the meantime, I will see you online by looking through this camera. I will see you in person here, and I'll see you in person out on the trails and other places. I love you, gang. Happy New Year.